Hi guys, welcome to This Is Rob Building. We try and answer your questions while we do these vlogs on the comments and things and something that keeps coming up, how to build identical sets of rods. And the easiest way to do that is a, a set of carp rods because they are absolutely 100% identical and the carp angler is going to be sat behind his rod setup and he's going to be looking at it all the time and it needs to be absolutely spot on. Now there's some tips and tricks that we're going to go through today and show you as we build a full set of Atrex 12 foot three and a halfs how you can make sure they're identical, guide layout, everything like that, to make it really easy for you to build a super top set of cart rods. So uh, without further ado, let's grab out some tools, get on the glue pinny. This is Rod Building. I'm Gary Benny, English rod builder living in Sweden. I've been building rods for many years and now you're gonna join me in my workshop going through tips, tricks, techniques, tools of the trade, all the things you want to know when you're coming to build a rod. We're gonna drink a lot of tea, so join me on the ride. Let's have some fun. This is Rob Building, let's do this. To start with, the most important thing is to remember that every blank that isn't coated is gonna need a clean down. Now, Atrex carp blanks are a raw high modulus carbon fiber. Now that's gonna mean there is possibly gonna be some carbon fiber dust on there. So I would recommend getting a rag and just giving it a clean down with some alcohol. So it's a bit boring. This isn't a basics video, so I'm just gonna crack on and get on with that. And uh, after I've finished, we'll crack on. Okay, cleaned off. They're pretty clean blanks, but there was a little bit there. You can always see on these light colored rags just how much dirt you're removing. And that's the sort of thing that could cause fish eyes on your epoxy and stuff like that later on. So it's always good just to remove any sort of that carbon fiber dust. One thing that's very important to remember, and you'll see on the bench here, I'm laying the butts with the tips all the time, is you want to really remember which tip goes with which butt. Each of these two piece blanks are specifically in the factory matched to each other. And we want to try and keep the sets the same. So for that, the easiest thing I've found to do is just simply get some masking tape and mark each one up. So with the sections marked up, A, B, C, one, two, three, you name it, now we can separate them out. We got them around the workshop, we don't have to worry, we can always find the set, we know which tip goes with which butt. And now to mark them up, we're gonna start sort of working out our dimensions of where the guide's gonna go on the tip, and then where the grips and everything go on the butt section. Now to mark out the guides, the easiest thing I found, if you're building lots of rods regularly, is one of these. Now this is a marker stick. It's something that maybe you don't see many people using. Everyone's gonna drag out their you know, bits of paper which says the guide placement or look online. But if you're building a lot of rods, like I do, uh, 12 foot, three and a half, 13 foot, three and a half cart rods, I like to have one of these sticks. You can pick them up at your local hardware store. Not gonna set you back a lot of money. And if you see, I've got these black marks down the stick. For me, that makes life so much easier for marking up lots of rods. I can do sets of six, 12, you name it at a time. Very easy to do. And what I do is I mark up on the top exactly what blank model this is for. 12 foot, three to three and 0.75 pounds. So that's the cast rate. Carp, 50, 40, 30, 25, 20 guide spacing. So if you have numerous of these, you can have for different rod models, stack them in the corner, under the bench, really quick. So we're gonna crack on and mark up the tips. So make sure the tips are aligned with the very top of the stick. I just use a flat edge. This ruler here works perfectly. Make sure they're all nice and flat. And then very simply holding them down, you can just mark up all the spacing based on where they're gonna be. And there we have it, very simple. Not many guys on a cart rod. That didn't take too long. So our tips are all marked up now. So we're almost ready to uh, do the wrapping. Now, one thing I would say is a bit of a tip for you is I found that when you're doing your spining up before you're gonna put the guides on, one thing I like to do is I like to do the tip at the same time. Now, the reason I do that is because I find it easy to align it with the spline of the blank. And also when I'm then wrapping the guides onto the blank, it's easier to align with the tip top. So I'm just gonna get these on now before we go and wrap them up. I've got the parts bin bit ready here that I picked off of the side. 
in here I have all the components I need for these rod bills, for these three rods. Again, that's important. You're making sure all the real seats the same, all the guys are the same. Pick it out, put it in a bin. You know it's there to one side. Just makes life a bit easier. So I'm gonna pick out one of the tip tops. I'm gonna get some tip glue. And I just use, some people use a lighter. I use uh, one of these flame flowers. I don't know what you call them, flame throw or gas burner maybe, maybe quite a flame thrower. And tip top glue. Now, some people will make a mistake on tip top glue. They'll go to the hardware store and they'll buy like hot melt glue. It does look the same, but trust me, it isn't. This melts at a higher temperature, which means that when you're out there fishing in the heat of the sun, uh, if you use that other stuff that's a lot cheaper in the hardware store, your tips will start rotating. Whereas this stuff is more like a hot plastic, I guess. So anyway, use this stuff. So we're just gonna get one of the tips. We're gonna get our glue and our tip top. And I just melt a little bit of the tip of the glue here until it's just steaming. And I'll just rub it onto the blank like so. Take a little bit more. Don't worry if it goes hard on the top and add a decent amount like that. Put your glue stick one side, and then without too much heat on the blank, just give it another quick heat like so. And then what I like to do is I like to just scoop up a little bit of the glue and then push it down. Now, of course, I've already checked these tip guides and made sure they're a good fit for the tip. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold the tip, push the blank to find the spine, and what you'll find is it will naturally position the tip perfectly where it should be. And that's done. Let's go put some guides on. There we go. All we've got to do now is remove the white marks. Don't forget that one. It's a little bit annoying when you come to the epoxy and you see you've got your chalk marks there. The guides are not straight, so we're just going to line those up with the tip. The tip I've already done with a spine, uh, and that's going to have a little bit of decorative wrap. The rod's going to be marked one, two, three, like we labeled the rods up in ABC, so we know which tip goes to butt. Other than that, looks good. So I'm going to start lining the guides up, uh, clean off the marks, and there we go. So when you've got these chalk marks, uh, if you um, can get in there with a little bit of rag, a little bit of wet rag, and just sort of like try and rub it off. Uh, it will normally come off quite easy. Um, you can just remove it, but sometimes if it's not so easy, a little top tip, get some of that degrade thread, just wet it with a bit of saliva and go in and just back and forth, kind of polish it off and you'll find that it will just slowly start to remove. And then if anything is sort of left, you can just remove it with your finger. Another top tip would be if you got good eyesight on cart rods where they're not got any coating or painting is actually use like a 2B pencil. Uh, that dark gray line is gonna be a lot easier to clean off. Chalk markers can be a little bit tricky because they're oily based. So yeah, that's another top tip. So when you've got it all whipped up, obviously you're gonna check the guides. Now, some people have got lasers, some people have got tools to do this, but in my opinion, you can't beat the eye. So the easiest thing I do is when I've got my tip guide on with the spine, is I'll start by going back and I'll just rest the blank against my cheek and I'll just look down through and just gently tweeze them one by one until I feel they're all in line. They're yeah, looking pretty good. And another thing, you can just lay the tip on the ground, you can just look down through Make sure the blank is centered between each guide. Turn it over, give it another look. I can see that that guide there just needs a little bit of tweak. Yeah, she's looking good. So there we go. One wrapped up, two more to go. Can't believe I almost forgot that. That would have been a schoolboy error, wouldn't it? It's uh, good with a cup of tea, a little bit of a break before we crack on. So, mm, very nice indeed. Where were we? building a set of cart rods. We've done the tips, they're all done. So we're gonna set those to one side now and have a look at the butt sections. So we've got all our butts marked up, A, B, C. We've cleaned them all down. And these ones here in specific, we're gonna build them with a quite cool, old school, full EVA setup. I've got all the bits ready. I've got the real seats here. I've got all the trim, everything ready that I'm gonna build these rods with. Now, of course, any rod builder will tell you that, you know, you can make these yourself. Uh, you don't have to buy them off the shelf and everything. But after many years of rod building, uh, myself and other rod builders have come together and designed these components because it's what we always use. And it seems pointless to have to make it every, every time the same. 
so these are available off the shelf. So that's what I'm going to be using today. But of course, if you want, you can hit the lathe, you can use your cork, EVA, shrink tube, whatever you want. I'm just going to go through the principles about how to make sure they're all the same. Um, so I'm going to start with EVA grips. We've got three of those again, all the same. And we're going to start by uh, doing a pressure fit on these. One important thing to remember when you're pressure fitting with thinner EVA like this is that you're going to be pushing on it, stretching it, dragging it. And if you were to cut all of these to length now, so if the customer says to you that, you know, they want a 54 centimeter length, for example, and you cut them all to 54 centimeters, Often when you glue them on the blank with the pressure fit, you'll find out that they're all not the same. Uh, they've got a few millimeters here and there. And so to avoid that, I always advise to trim them after. So I'll show you how to trim them up in a bit. But first off, we're gonna pressure fit. So um, I'm gonna crack on and get these three done as quickly as possible. Uh, let's see how quickly we can do it. The glue's all mixed up and we're gonna start pressure fitting the EVA. Now, one thing that a lot of people make the mistake with when they're doing this pressure fit technique is they just put so much glue on. But if you can imagine that there's not really any room because we're pressure fitting it. So you don't need a lot of glue. You're looking for a thin bead. So even I make that mistake regularly where you just whack it on and you realize when you pressure fit it down, you have a lot of glue at the end. So don't really need it, but you're always better to mix up a little bit more than too little, of course. I've already marked up all the grip marks. So I've got my top mark, which is my total length. I've got my bottom mark, which is where the grip's gonna start to tighten up. And I know that I wanna be applying most of the glue between those two marks. So we're gonna crack on and do that now. An even spread just between those two marks, scraping it down, keeping it as thin as possible, like so. And then what I'll do, just for the benefit of it, is I'll just give a small just bead down like so. And that really is just for peace of mind. It's not really needed. I scrape off any excess if I think it's too much, check for any sort of thicker bits and put that one back down. And you can see there's not a lot of glue there at all. It's actually a very, very thin bead. And then what we're gonna do is gonna pop the blank down safely like so. Check our hands, I'm using gloves. Now the problem with gloves is it looks after your hands, but you don't feel the glue. And so you have gotta be a bit careful if you're gonna start touching your grips and stuff like that. And that's why it's always good just to have a, a rub rag, as I call it, just next to you. So I'm gonna get the thinners now. Uh, cheapest thinners you can find, really. And again, the, the dirty one. Very simple, I'm gonna put my finger over the bottom of the EVA, my thumb. And then very carefully balancing this. It's harder with the longer grips. Just pour in, like so. And you'll feel it come down to the bottom. Put your other thumb over the top and just give it a swoosh around, up and down, so the, the thinners can work the full length of the EVA. And then we're just gonna gently pour any residue back in. And there'll be a bit of dust and stuff, and that's why we call it the dirty one. Then what we're gonna do, a tip for when you're doing this on the cart rods, is to find a bit of blank that will fit into the butt and stop. And the reason for that is when you're gonna pressure fit down, you're gonna push that grip and it's gonna to wanna to go all the way off, but you're gonna push all the glue with it as well. So it makes it a bit easier to clean up. Now, this is a little bit tricky for me to show you in front of the camera because of the bench size. So I'm gonna to have to do it behind the bench and I'm just gonna go down onto my knees and with one quick moment, I'm gonna push it all the way down. And it's as simple as that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the EVA and just pull it back a little bit because we've gone a little bit too far and just try and look for where the end is and then we remove our bit of blank, and you can see it's perfectly fitted. Yeah, lovely. Two more to go. So suitable time for another slurper tea. Uh, all three are now pressure fitted and gonna be drying on there. Um, they're looking pretty good. As I said, if I was gonna take a measure to those now, or I just lay them next to each other, they're gonna be pretty close, but 
there. It's a good representation. You can see that they're not quite the same, and that's why I don't recommend for you to cut the grips to size before you fit them. Just a little tip from me to you, but to get them more accurately, just do it this way. So now they're gonna dry, we're gonna leave them for a little while, I'm gonna finish my tea, and I'm gonna whip over and show you a really good way of getting very accurate clean cuts, so then we can start fitting the real seats. The reason we don't cut the EVA to size before we pressure fit it onto the blank is because when you're pushing it down, that EVA can squeeze up a little bit or even be longer. So your sizes are not gonna be accurate. You want all the lengths to be exactly the same. And the best way of doing that is to then, when they're glued up and dry, is to bring it across to your lathe on your power wrapper and then measure them up and cut them under speed with a razor blade. These ones here, we're gonna do at 52 and a half centimeters. It's roughly 20 and a half inches. I make a very simple little white mark with a china marker. I then put it into the power wrapper and then with a sharp razor blade, I'm just gonna turn it and cut on that mark. Make sure to cut straight. And don't push too hard because you don't wanna go through cutting into the blank. And then very simply, you can just push that back and cut it away. And there you go, perfect size, and do that for all the other blanks. Then it's back to the gluing bench, put the real seats on. So we're ready to finally get the real seats on the rod. This is the, the last stage of a carb rod, really, other than obviously we've got the butt guide and that dressing up to do. But what I recommend for you to do, firstly, of course, is to invest in uh, something like this. You know, they don't cost a lot of money. Get yourself a pair of digital calipers. And what you're gonna be using them for is just to purely measure up around here. Uh, and I can see this one is 14.8 millimeters. So I need a 15 mil uh, rear collar. Now there's lots of different collars you can do. Uh, the ones I'm gonna use are designed to fit into the back of these CRSD seats. And they just add a little trim there basically. And they sort of expand the OD of the rear pipe. It just gives a nice finish basically. Some people choose not to use it. You can just put this real seat up against the EVA. That's tied up to you. But for these builds here, uh, we are actually gonna be using these. So these ones here have already sized up. So it's a very simple case of just sliding them down to position like this. When you've got that one sorted, it's, it's pretty tight, but not total tight. So what I'd recommend doing is just get a little bit of thin tape. Sometimes you can take a smaller one and you can actually, you know, ram them into position and they will do, but uh, just a small bit of tape underneath and you'll find that it'll just snug into position like so. And then what you wanna do is just get a sharp blade and very gently just run around. So not to score the blank, just the tape. And then you wanna just remove that tape like that. And the winding check is then perfectly fitted. So with that rear winding check fitted, it's a simple one now. We're gonna put the real seat in position. This video is all about making things accurate. And of course, when you've got this section done, in the right length and they're all the same, that is pretty much the only thing you can do. The real seats, um, I would maybe suggest you could just, you know, check them because uh, different batches sometimes. The American Tackle seats are normally extremely level, so you don't have to worry. But some carbon fiber products and things like that can be a little bit different from different manufacturers and just making sure, you know, putting a ruler on them and seeing if they're level, that's just gonna keep that accuracy for you. Um, but generally speaking, if you're using the same manufacturer's product, Nine times out of 10, they're gonna be the same. So you don't really need to see how to put on a real seat. So I'm just gonna crack on and get it done, finish up the rod, and then you can see exactly how all three look when they're all together. off we just need some winding checks. I've got some black ones, we're going with a real black theme on this one. So I'm just going to take the right size which I measured up earlier. When you take one measurement of the blank around the real seat you know roughly where it's going to be. So I'm going to slide it down to position. It's called a dry fit now when you're not gluing up and we're just going to lay it like that. It looks absolutely perfect. Everything's going to fit lovely. Ready for some glue but first I'm going to dry fit all the three and uh, there slap some glue on and we're going to be ready for that final trim of the butt guide. And we've got a set of rods. Lovely. So we're gonna glue on some real seats. Uh, I use the five minute again. Now, some people will use the 40 minute. It depends how fast you're gonna go. I plan to glue on one real seat at a time with the five minute. So it's entirely up to you how quickly you wanna do it. Get your stuff ready in advance, get your mixing sticks, 
Um, you know, I'm not gonna show you how to glue on a real seat. It's pretty basic. Uh, and American Tackles YouTube, we have really good how-tos if you wanna sort of, you know, learn how to glue on real seat, whip on guys and all that stuff. So make sure to check out some of the other episodes and series we have uh, showing you how to do that. But I'm just gonna quickly get on with it, mix up the five minute. And it's five minutes from when it starts activating. So it is gonna be quite a quick thing. You have to get on with it. And you have to think your cleanup time was in within that five minutes as well. You know, if you're not that quick and uh, you haven't done this so much, I might recommend using the 40 minute. The reason I use the five minute is I find that it sets quicker. And so it sits where you put it. Whereas the 40 minute, it can tend to seep a little bit more. So you need to pay attention for your cleanup because it can seep out of little gaps and stuff that you might not uh, have noticed. And take some glue and just lay it on our arbors that we built up. Make sure to coat right up around the arbors. Always make sure to fill around the front. That's where you could get water ingress, really. Now, when we get down the bottom here, I'm just gonna let the glue turn into that gap that I've left. And then I'm gonna get myself a little bit of rag. I'm just gonna turn it in position and just wipe away any excess and then a little bit of tape move that away and you'll find that you'll always get a little bit of a bead of glue down the bottom there and it's just a case of just gently wiping it away and there we have it perfect glued on like i said pay attention just if you see any shiny spots as i call it just get the rag and just wipe around. But if you put that tape on the back of the real seat there, which is a little bit of a tip, you can normally get rid of it. And if you have any stubborn stuff, just get yourself a little bit of cleaning alcohol and just gently go around with that. Two more to go. So there we have it perfect matching set of rods. All the lengths are correct, all the tips are correct, all the guides line up. I've just put the butt caps in and uh, the seats are all glued on. So now it's just that final lovely bit of actually to finish them. So we're gonna do the, the wrap in front. Now cart rods, unfortunately, it's a black, black and a little bit more black. So there's not much color gonna go on these. That is what the guys want. So that's what they're gonna get. Uh, gonna put on the Vortex Air 50 mil guides and then it's to the epoxy bench. So that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna wrap them up and then we'll show you what they look like at the end. So these rods are looking absolutely perfect. You've seen exactly now all the steps for us to get to making a matching set of rods. And I guess the thing that you've noticed throughout all is measure twice, cut once. That's the top tip I can give you really. Uh, as long as you remember to take marks and, and measure it up, they're gonna be absolutely identical. And that goes not just for cart rods, that goes for any kind of bass rods and things. Obviously, if you're doing different actions and lengths for sets of rods with like, you know, bass or perch rods or, or things like that, then you need to consider that. But it's just about keeping that consistency throughout the build and trying to match it up. But if you need to do identical sets of rods, the most important thing you can do is to keep measuring. Get that ruler out, get your little markers out, measure each whip, measure the, the guide wraps, check the guides are gonna match, and you're gonna end up with a really nice set of rods. I'm pretty sure they're gonna be really happy. They're a perfect matching set of rods. If you like these videos we're doing for you, and this is Rod Building, please make sure to subscribe, like, you know, all that stuff. Make sure you let us know that you wanna see more content from us, and we're happy to provide it. Comment below if there's something you haven't seen us do yet. I'll answer, I'll see what I can do. Any questions, if you're interested in anything we've done, maybe the components, let me know. Well, that's me for today. Uh, I'm gonna get epoxy in, but for me and you, that's a wrap.